Hi there, this is Faye from Face World Media, and I woke up this morning, I saw this message. Zoom, mail, and calendar client beta is live. Let's take a look. So this way, you're able to navigate your emails right through Microsoft 365 or Gmail and make this whole email scheduling experience even easier. So this is the brief introduction if you want to take a look. By the way, it's still in beta. So some of the things that you can do include connecting Gmail. You can use your existing email and calendar in the Zoom app, schedule join meeting, send a copy of an email to Zoom team chat channel, schedule Zoom phone calls, and also use across desktop and mobile. Of course, I was thinking about the same thing about your Tesla. What if you're able to manage everything and take calls directly from your Tesla? Try Zoom mail and calendar service to get started. You can click on sign up for free. If you already have a Zoom account, all you have to do is just sign in here. All right, right here at the top, beta is live and click get started, this little blue text, which is not so obvious. So about more than halfway down the page, you have resources. So you have tutorials on how to set up your Zoom mail client or set up your Zoom calendar client. So let's take a look at the mail portion first. Here's the configuration, prerequisite, how to perform initial installation. You have Windows or Mac OS. So I'm just curious, I'm on Mac OS. Let's take a look on what it is. So what it's saying is you have to sign into the Zoom desktop client here and at the top, see here, click on mail. And from this page, you can get started and you can sign in using Google. So I'm going to do that. On the next page, you're going to select the service. This is your calendar. I'm going to select Google and you're gonna give permission as to read and write. I'm gonna just leave it as the default one. Click on next. Now you're gonna sign in to your Gmail, click on continue, and it says kind of open Zoom. All right, let's open up Zoom right here. It's just gonna pop open right here. It kind of took me back to where I sort of gotten started. So what happens is on their learn more page by default, check it out, the read and write permissions for mail inside, for my example, Google Mail. So Gmail was actually not automatically checked. And uh, that's something that you'll have to do. And you can take a look here as well. If you're using Microsoft 365 Exchange, you also have to check the read and write permission there. So let me do that again. See right here, I have to give zoom permissions to read and write my email click on next now i go ahead and select my gmail so select what zoom can access so it's not checked by default you just have to make sure that is done now opened up zoom okay there we go so now you can see what it looks like i'm gonna blur in the middle just because this is my personal email and on the right hand side you can see that my calendar is shown I can basically navigate my Gmail inside, uh, you know, this Zoom app. I can resize this window and, and see what I need to do. And I click on calendar here, which is the third icon next to home and mail. Now I also have full access to my calendar as well. And so let's go ahead and just say I'm going to schedule a new event. Click on new event. And this should give me very easy access to book a Zoom meeting. So one thing I notice is it doesn't automatically pull in my contact, probably because I wasn't giving uh, Zoom permission to do that. So that's something that you definitely want to do. So your invitee are automatically populated. And so that's one thing. The other is that you're able to, let's say, join the meeting automatically. So that's the easy part. And that's it. You more or less have the same control as your Google Calendar. It's just another view, kind of almost looks like an embedded view inside your Zoom desktop app. Let me know what you think. Now, there are some additional applications and functions that I talked about in my other videos. Things like, you know, you have your team chat. Honestly, let me know in the comments below. I haven't really been using this as much because I'm not using Zoom as a team feature. It's just something more for me. There's also the Zoom Zoom phone, which I have not used. And then you're back to Zoom meeting and the rest of, you know, contacts and all that. This is pretty straightforward. As you can see, I have not really saved much of, say, my email contact uh, inside. Before I wrap up, you may be wondering if you don't like to use Zoom mail, how do you actually disconnect it? from Google. So you should be able to do that right from Zoom. I haven't really found an option that's very uh, visible. So let me start with the Gmail side. So log into right now inside your Gmail, click on your person icon, and you're gonna pop open this panel right here. 
click on manage your Google account. Inside here, you're gonna go into security and now you're able to see that the recent activities, how your account is protected, and then you're gonna scroll about halfway down. There's a section right here called third-party apps with account access. You're gonna click on manage third-party access. Now I'm looking at this, I'm thinking it's actually a really good idea to review this on a regular basis. Here at the very bottom, you're gonna see Zoom. At the bottom, you're gonna see Zoom. And when you expand that before you remove it, you can actually see precisely what you have given permission to. So, you know, in case you made a mistake and you wanna reset up or reconfigure this integration, you can always remove access and then give permission to Zoom again. So things like I mentioned, I previously did not really give Zoom access to my contacts. So as I was scheduling meetings inside the Zoom desktop app, I couldn't even find the person. It was not autofill. So of course, for that reason, I always go back to Google to schedule my meeting. Instead, if you really love using Zoom, this is where you can configure and make sure that you give Zoom all the access it needs to get your job done. So for now, I would say I'm okay without Zoom mail. I'm gonna just get rid of it. I came back to the Zoom desktop app and I saw right here under mail and to the right hand side, there's a little gear button. So click on that and there's something called email preference. Once you click on that, you notice that uh, you can change a few things here, unread email, push a notification, loading external sources, share your data with a source owner, that sort of thing, and your signature here, but also there's log out in the lower left-hand corner. So click on log out, boom, it's that simple. You just disconnected Zoom from using your mail, whether that is uh, Microsoft Office 365 or Gmail. So I hope you find this video helpful. Again, this is Faye from Faze Road Media. If you like this type of content, also be sure to check out our ultimate guide to Zoom for hosts and moderators. I just feel like that is such a group of people who need a lot of knowledge in addition to you know joining any virtual meeting such as Zoom as a participant. So I hope to see you in the next video and take care for now. Bye and happy holidays.